comment below. Let me know, is this gonna work or is this gonna fail? Find out now. There you are, welcome back. I hope you got your guesses in the comments. If not, you still have time. Let me know if you think that print is actually going to work. Now, we're talking about print in place, which we've showcased on the channel before, but just as a quick refresher, a print in place model is something that prints all at the same time. Just like this clock spring box, you're able to turn it over and the gears turn to then lock it into place or the planetary phone stand. Everything prints all at once, it screws into place, and then you can hold your phone. Nifty. Printed place can also be used to make really fun things like this sword. How cool is that? This was printed on my Prusa Mark III like years ago, and it's in Protopost i5 Blue, of course, and it's just withstood the test of time, and printed place gives us options like this. Now for this time, we're talking about print in place gears and for that we're using JBV Creative models and you can get these all at his website and if you go to the website, you can purchase them just like I did. There's two of them, look at that. These are print in place gears and they mesh with each other. Personally, I love the idea of print in place models just because you print it all at once and then fold it up or break away some supports or whatever and you're left with an item that serves a specific purpose and it's all printed all at one time. Gears are cool because then they mesh together. It's kind of fun to see how the pieces interact with each other. And it's a way of verifying whether your printer is uh, up to spec, so to say, whether the clearance specified in the model is something that your printer can reproduce. Let's do something bigger. And unfortunately, it did not work. So this is from JBV Creative as well. You can tell that these gears kind of work. This one's sad. <laughs> It's like a spider saying, hello, I'm a spider. <laughs> Hi. I printed this on my Daedalus, just like the other ones, and it wasn't a problem with the Daedalus. It just happens to be a function of this material. You also experience something like this with Polyalchemy Elixir, where it's a shiny, shimmery, somewhat elastic-y sort of material, and it doesn't have the layer adhesion standard PLAs offer. And so you end up with something like this if you don't have enough parameters. A little bit bigger. <laughs> <laughs> Same model, uh, the red is Blood of My Enemies from Protopost and Amy Double D. The silver is second to none silver, which is a PLA from Protopasta that was color produced by Out of Darts. You know, Luke, you've been, to, you've been to Out of Darts, but look at that, those just kinda spin around. And it makes a racket while you do it, and it's just, it's just exciting. This is a model that JBV Creative created. It showcases gear ratios. So it's a 16.8 to one gear ratio. It means that this gear turns 16.8 times in the same time it takes this gear to turn one time. Squeaky, but look at that. So this, this turns super duper fast. This does not. And that is a, well, that's a demonstration of torque. This is giving you a whole bunch of torque because it doesn't take much to move this, but in moving this a bunch, you get some movements here. If I'm able to turn it this way, now we've reversed it. So this doesn't move a lot, this will move a bunch. So if I'm able to turn this, this one should spin crazy, ready? Look at that. So this is the definition of showcasing rather than torque, it's showcasing speed through gear ratios because I don't have to put a lot of effort into here in order to get this to spin a whole bunch. And this is best demonstrated, let's see, bicycle gears and car gears. First gear in your car is more like this if you're driving a standard or a stick shift. But obviously moving into fifth gear because the, the system's already spinning, then fifth gear is kind of like this, where it doesn't need as much effort to keep the wheels spinning really fast. But I know why you're here. You're all waiting to see if that print on the G-Max actually works and actually just even comes off the build plate. I did uh, challenge you to guess whether or not it was going to work off the build plate, if the gears were gonna spin. So get your guesses in the comments and let's go try to take it off the build plate. I did print 
one of these, the handled ones on the G Max, but you don't care. You want to see, you want to see this. Oh my gosh, look at this. This is 307 gears modeled by JVV Creative. In fact, he challenged me to print this on my GMAC. This is printed using two different colors of protopastas recycled PLA that Alex brought up that one time. There is one small problem right here, but beyond that, I don't see anything else that really stands out. There are 307 gears, and each one of those gears has a spindle in the middle, which means there are at least 614 individual points of contact on the build plate. What? All right, I'm gonna stop talking and we're just gonna start trying to get this off the build plate. You just sit back and enjoy the magic of rock. That's perfect. Oh! <laughs> Victory! Oh my gosh. 307 gears printed in protopasta's recycled PLA. So what's supposed to happen, if tolerances are correct, I can spin this and spin these, but this isn't turning. But it's all in one piece. I didn't break anything off. So I think what we're gonna do is take it back to the desk and we'll investigate each of the gears, try to break this loose, and then find out if it spins. Some of them free up. Like these ones, some of them are just not good. Um, I'm gonna call it. Try as I might, the gears will not turn. I did what I could to calibrate the machine beforehand and I thought I was in Happyville. That's not the case. And it's actually evident by what you can see on the bottom. If you look over here, the extrusions aren't nearly as close together as they are over here. And across a bed that is 457 millimeters on X and Y, it's really, really imperative that you have a perfect level in order for something like this to accomplish. What I'm really happy about is everything for the most part stuck down. There were a couple stragglers that didn't, but looking from above, the only thing that had the issue was this one right here. That's the only one that I could see that actually kind of wobbled out of place. Some of them do turn. It is really interesting to look at. It's, it's an incredible almost piece of art, if you will. So normally what would happen is I would turn this, which would turn this, which would turn this. Oh, the handle broke off. And actually that's a great segue into the next segment because I do wanna talk about this model and whether or not we should try it again once I've tuned the machine and once I've gotten a really, really good bed level. JBV Creative has himself an updated version of this and it does have easier to print connections between the gears and he's thickened this stock, so to speak, and so it won't break off as easily since this is gonna be responsible for turning all of this. If you would like to see me re-attempt the new model, let me know if I should do that because if enough of you say yes, then I'll dedicate the time to tuning the G-Max, to getting a perfect bed level, to doing the tests, to make sure all of the corners print just fine and we'll make it happen. So let me know in the comments if you wanna see 307 gears, part two. All hope is not lost though, because we did learn some really cool stuff. We had some really fun examples of print in place, right? That was cool. We had a, a, a lesson about polyalchemy elixir and matter hackers quantum and other filaments that are like that are that are shiny and glimmery and how they don't necessarily have the best layer adhesion and require more perimeters in order to make models that aren't spiders that have legs that say hello. Uh, finally, we did get to explore gear ratios. So this was that JBV creative model that gives us, uh, what was it, 18 to one? 18 to one, so this spins 18 times before this uh, for this one to spin one time and that shows us 
torque. And if we turn it around, then this spins once, this spins 18 times, and that gives us speed. We talked about that. He actually has an updated version of this model that gives him a more than 4,000 to one gear ratio. The first gear is turned over 4,000 times for the last gear to turn just once. And it's crazy. I'll put a link to it down in the description. Obviously go to his website. That's in the description as well. You can buy these cool models. <sighs> if you made it this far, you're awesome. Don't forget to hug each other more. Fight for a cause you believe in. Tune your machines. And as always, high five.